Uranium, 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 uranium. Chased by the deep state, fighting for independence, thinking about revolution, looking for alternative solutions. The enemies of the deep state will tell you what others even don't dare to think. Manuel Oxenreiter and Mateusz Piskorski. Hello, hello, hello. This is again the podcast, Die Guten Menschen, Public Enemies of the Deep State. My name is Manuel Ochsenreiter. I'm editor-in-chief of the German news magazine Zuerst. And on the other side is again my friend and colleague, Mateusz Piskorski. Mateusz, how is Poland today? Uh, Poland is great again, as the uh, US was supposed to be. Yes, make, <laughs> you know, that is the problem. When I say make Germany great again, all our neighbors uh, start being upset. <laughs> yes, exactly. But uh, as you have, uh, as you are permanently uh, doing a kind of uh, hidden advertisement, let me do the same. I'm from the weekly uh, magazine Myśl Polska. That means the Polish thought for Which those who don't Polish understand. Thought. For those who don't understand, we Germans are always there to explain Polish words, terms. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> and uh, just, just say, I mean, that is important. It is um, right now the oldest still existing um, Polish newspaper, something like that, right? Since 1941. But uh, in its beginnings, it's, uh, it was published in London, unfortunately not in, uh, in Poland, due to some, uh, let's say, temporary geopolitical problems. I, <laughs> I, I, I will not ask. I, my memory doesn't go back to 1941, as the memory of many of my... <laughs> okay, that's why let's, let's come to contemporary geopolitics better. Today we have... Maybe not a topic which is uh, in all the headlines in Europe, but that makes it maybe even uh, more interesting. Today we speak about the geopolitics of nuclear power and um, in, uh, or precisely about what is going on in Belarus. I think that where recently the first big nuclear power plant uh, started working, or if, if I'm right, or you, you know more as, as usual. Um, What is what is happening there in Belarus? Yes, of course, I, I know more because uh, you in Germany decided to close all nuclear power plants. So uh, you are not any more into that topic, I, as I understand. Yes, we are, we are overly upset about anyone who and everyone who doesn't follow us in this decision. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe, maybe you can tell something since, um, in uh, my opinion, Belarus was like most of um, former uh, Soviet states, uh, mostly dependent on Russian gas and Russian oil as, as resources for energy. So with uh, nuclear power, Belarus is getting maybe even an important step more independent when it comes to the energy question. Or is, is can, can we interpret it like that? Uh, that's why I see here one of the paradoxes. I mean, uh, the West is, uh, the so-called West is... Uh, hardly uh, harshly criticizing Belarus and uh, its uh, government and its president, not only for the political issues, but also due to um, the opening of the nuclear power plant there uh, near the Belarus and Lithuanian border, yes. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, as you have mentioned, uh, as you have noticed, it, it's a real, uh, uh, let's say, endeavor to diversify the sources of energy in uh, Belarus. Not only in Belarus, but by, by the way, but potentially also in neighboring countries. Uh, of, of course, one may say that uh, it's uh, Rosatom, the Russian state-owned corporation uh, who, who is a main uh, investor and who has uh, sold part of its technology to build this power plant. Uh, anyway, Uh, if you follow the geopolitics, what we have called uh, in our podcast, the geopolitics of energy, or more precisely, the geoeconomics of energy, you see, of course, even within one country, different interests when it comes to different corporations. Take Russia. I mean, uh, it's uh, quite obvious that uh, Gazprom, for instance, 
has um, uh, quite different and somehow, somehow contrary interests compared to Rosatom, yes? They are, of course, they are selling the source of energy, the technologies and so on, but uh, uh, of course the uh, power, nuclear power station in Belarus will decrease the level of influence of uh, Gazprom and uh, all the gas sellers from Russia there in uh, Belarus. So uh, I think that uh, the so-called West uh, European Union should uh, support uh, and uh, think about uh, the diversity of uh, energy sources for Belarus, so uh, that should be supported uh, actually by 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 the by the so-called West. It's not, of course, due to also geopolitical issues. You know that. Uh, uh, let's start with gas. You know that uh, Poland is trying to uh, sell all over Europe uh, the American gas. Yes, they also want to do that for Germany. Yes, yes, but I. Think but you don't want to buy. We didn't even start with a uh, harbor close to Bremen, which uh, uh, is always, I think since years it's announced as the most modern harbor for, uh, for gas uh, import. But as far as I know, um, Nord Stream 2 is, is almost to be finished. And the American harbor or for the harbor for the American gas, I, I don't know if they started already. Um, Yes, but I mean, again, uh, when we speak about geopolitics, one view on the map uh, will tell a five-year-old child from where it is better to import gas and oil <laughs> than, than from the United well, States. Uh, it's, it's very important because you have mentioned uh, the Nord Stream project as well. And of course, uh, Poland and some other Central European countries uh, did everything to uh, somehow uh, disturb the, the whole uh, project. They did that because they have a dream. They have an American dream to become a hub for the American gas being uh, uh, then exported to all European countries, including Germany. Uh, this, is, this is their idea. This is what, what they believe in and so on. Uh, but uh, this is about the gas. The same thing is going about uh, the nuclear energy. I mean, uh, look at the countries which are now somehow uh, let's say developing their nuclear energy uh, projects in uh, central and eastern europe first you have uh, four nuclear power stations in ukraine the very old uh, let's say built in the soviet times uh, power plants which are quite of a danger for for the neighboring countries and, and for the ukrainian population as well uh, they became dangerous after the coup d'etat in uh, 2014 because uh, uh, they ceased to import and to cooperate with uh, Rosatom, so uh, with the provider of the technology on which those power stations in Ukraine are based. They were built in Soviet times. They have, uh, they have so them, right? And uh, <laughs> by the way. By coincidence, this is never a big topic in Europe, although we had already the experience with Chernobyl in 1986. Oh, but yes. Of course. So, so here you have, uh, uh, you know, the, the um, complete uh, uh, failure of the whole nuclear system of uh, Ukraine, which consists of four nuclear power stations with uh, 15 reactors, active uh, nuclear reactors there. And uh, the mm, fuel for those reactors is now provided, guess by whom? By Westinghouse Company from United States. Uh, so uh, this is the geopolitics I'm, I'm, I'm talking now about. Uh, this is the geoeconomics as well. Uh, you have uh, little, let's, let's, let's take a look a little bit uh, southern from uh, south of uh, Ukraine. You have uh, Romania there with uh, its uh, nuclear power plant in uh, Chernavoda. Uh, it's also uh, from the times of uh, 70s or, or early 80s, uh, but uh, they intended to build additional two reactors there in uh, Romania. And uh, in 2015, they have signed an agreement of uh, cooperation or a letter of intent with uh, a, a Chinese corporation, state corporation, uh, which is active in the nuclear sphere. Uh, four years later, in 2019, uh, they have uh, uh, 
let's say, rejected all the agreements they have made, refused to any further cooperation with the Chinese partners, and they have signed an agreement uh, with the uh, United States, of course, with uh, the corporations, nuclear corporations from, from the US, yes? Then you have Poland. Uh, in October uh, this year, Poland has signed an agreement on cooperation with uh, also the American uh, Department of uh, State and the American Department of uh, Energy about nuclear cooperation and about building another nuclear power plant on the territory of Poland uh, with uh, US technology. Uh, on the other hand, you have uh, Hungary with its, uh, let's say, quite independent uh, foreign policy and its decision to build and to, co to cooperate when it comes to the nuclear power station in Patch with uh, Rosatom. And they had the Russian investment there, yes. So we see very clearly that uh, uh, on the one hand, we were talking about the gas, so there is a war uh, between the gas sector of United States uh, trying to sell its uh, expensive gas to uh, Europe and to block uh, Gazprom and other Russian providers. On the other hand, you have uh, uh, even not a competition, but a war, I would say already, between uh, Rosatom, the Russian uh, uh, nuclear energy provider and provider of the technologies, on the one hand, and uh, two corporations from the US, uh, namely uh, Westinghouse, I have already mentioned, and uh, Hitachi General Electric. Because Hitachi, you know, it's a, it's a Japanese uh, a corporation, of course, but part of it, which is uh, doing the nuclear projects, their nuclear reactors, uh, was um, taken and bought by uh, General Electric. So you, you have two huge corporations with uh, huge uh, lobbies within any administration, be it uh, Republican or Democrat, it's, it doesn't matter. They have uh, really huge influences within uh, the ranks of both parties and all, let's say, the deep state as well, the, the American deep state. And uh, now we'll see the promotion of the American nuclear energy all over Europe, uh, particularly in the central and eastern part of Europe. That's why uh, one of the allies, or uh, to be more precise, satellites of uh, United States in Europe, Lithuania, uh, har harshly protested against uh, the uh, power plant in uh, Belarus. And this power plant, this power station, nuclear power station in Belarus, was intended to be a, uh, one of the very, very important strategic providers for all three Baltic states, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, uh, as well as uh, perhaps in some time for Poland. And as we, Poland and Germany, are in one uh, in, uh, electro, uh, electricity and electroenergy system, I mean the network, uh, it could be also exported to Germany. Uh, as, I, as I know, Germany will have some problems with the energy supplies, with the electricity supplies due to the closing of uh, a nuclear uh, energy, nuclear power, power plants. So uh, in the future, also Germany could use this energy, this cheap energy produced by uh, Belarus. Yeah. This is, I, I, I was about to say, maybe we should uh, also first for uh, empathize that, uh, I mean, all experts uh, from whatever I ideological direction they might come um, in, in, in these questions, I think, is a uh, united opinion or, or one opinion that the two uh, very important questions of the future will be the question about uh, the water and the question about energy that these can will also dominate future politics like maybe in the past it was the oil or the gas and that will be in the future especially in the countries which are where water or clean water is rare there might be wars about water and in the industrialized uh, world in the northern hemisphere there will be the question of energy and i was about to say germany will be for sure one of the future best customers of all uh, these eastern european countries which uh, are not only and i think that is also an important point they are not planning to um, enlarge their nuclear power Health. This is, will be for them an export product and uh, the customer, the biggest potential customer is very close. It is Germany, which is still an industrial country, 
with no economical interesting energy resources. Of course, we have still some coal, but I think uh, the coal we exploit the whole area would be much, much more expensive and maybe even of a worse quality than the coal we import right now from China. So that is a thing which is not possible. And I think the one, two, three, I don't know how many uh, oil uh, platforms uh, we actually have in the Northern Sea, but uh, for our um, energy request, they, they, our energy demand, they really don't play any role. So Germany strongly depends on energy import. And I think that all these countries which are now building um, the nuclear power plants are also clearly aiming to sell power, to sell energy, to make energy an export product. And that's quite interesting because that could be in far future, maybe a little game changer on the European continent also, because we speak about countries which usually export right now when it comes to Germany, cheap labor. And not so much more. Yeah. So uh, that that can change. And um, what is also quite interesting that um, Germany, as we said in the beginning, Germany took the decision uh, years ago when uh, the nuclear power plant in Japan, uh, after the what was that? Uh, Fukushima. Fukushima. Yes. After this earthquake, after they had they had problems there, but Germany actually had, uh, and I think you, each of you as a Polish will agree now that Germany was the country with the most secure um, and the best uh, nuclear power plants. Maybe not just in Europe, but even maybe in the world, it was a kind of showroom for nuclear power. Our companies, our nuclear power companies, were active in the whole world in building, and now. Of course, they won't be anymore because um, would you like, would you let build someone your house when you know that he is not allowed in his home country to build this house? Of course not. So this will be now replaced by American companies, by Russian companies, by Chinese companies, for sure. And we will see who in future, but to come back to um, the Belarusian case, if we look now, um, so, they will spare a lot of energy import from Russia when it comes to gas for now um, and, and, and for the future. Um, it means automatically that Belarusia will have for the future, not next year and maybe not in two years, but when the investment will, uh, will be balanced, um, they will have a much bigger state budget also. On the one side, maybe by energy export, but on the other side, also by not paying for energy import. Um, in your opinion, does this also change um, the, the geopolitical situation? Well, of course. I mean, uh, Belarus will uh, first and foremost invest even more in uh, nuclear uh, energy projects. Uh, President uh, Lukashenko has already announced that they are going to build another nuclear power station there. So there will be a second one as well, yes? And... Uh, uh, it's all regardless of uh, the controversies which might occur in uh, Belarus. You know, Belarus was the country which uh, suffered the most after the Chernobyl um, catastrophe in 1986. It was not Ukraine, actually, because uh, the Chernobyl, if you look at the location of uh, Chernobyl, it was just near the Belarusian border. And uh, the winds were blowing from the south to the north, mostly, mostly at that time. So... The radiation was highest in uh, Belarus. Uh, anyway, he has managed to convince the Belarusians that uh, the projects, uh, the most contemporary projects and the most uh, sophisticated projects by uh, Rosatom, and we are talking about the technology, the newest technology of Rosatom, which is used not only in Belarus, but uh, also in uh, countries like uh, Hungary, like Turkey, like India, like several other countries to which uh, Russia exports its uh, know-how and uh, uh, constructions when it comes to nuclear uh, sphere. Uh, so uh, anyway, it's uh, quite safe. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, a very interesting situation where, you know, in, in Poland, for instance, a lot of people are still against, you know, as well as in Germany, as yes, we are under the influence of the German Greens as well. 
So uh, we have a lot of people who are against uh, nuclear energy and nuclear power stations. Uh, we had uh, such a project in, back in the 80s, but even then in the, in the times of the so-communist, it was not communist actually, but of the so-called so communist regime, the protests were so huge that they uh, eventually didn't build that, uh, even, even back then. Uh, we'll have the, the same protests now, I think. And uh, the best solution to uh, avoid such protests in Poland, in Germany, in any other country of Central Europe would be simply to buy the energy from Belarus, which, which is uh, building uh, and planning to build even more reactors there. Yes? So uh, you get rid of a problem and you buy a cheap energy from there. And uh, that's why, yes, uh, if uh, Belarus uh, manages to break up the blockade, which was now established by Lithuania, by the neighboring Lithuania, on the American order and within the American uh, war against uh, Rosatom, uh, it might be a real, uh, let's say, at least regional, on the regional level, uh, a regional nuclear energy superpower in the future, yes, if they will uh, build some uh, some other power stations. Because if you look at other Central and Eastern European countries, they don't have such a potential. I mean, Poland perhaps in the future for uh, some uh, $10 billion or, or even more, will try to build uh, uh, its own or, and to be more precise, American uh, power station somewhere. But it's, uh, I think, not, not earlier than, uh, than in 10 or 15 years, uh, knowing the the let's say the quality of the polish management and uh, and uh, project management as such is yes. uh, czech republic is having just uh, two power stations which are quite old and there are some problems to uh, let's say uh, add some new reactors to them it's uh, a nuclear power station in, uh, in dukovlany uh, one of the very old old uh, Soviet uh, built uh, nuclear power station there and the second one. Uh, then you have uh, Hungary, which is, yes, actually investing some, some money in it. And you have Ukraine, which will be a catastrophe because it's a failed state, as we know. Uh, so, uh, which uh, will probably switch off some, at least some of its reactors due to the lack of uh, service maintenance and uh, all other issues. So, uh, Belarus might be the uh, one of the very few countries here in the Central and Eastern Europe, uh, which could be a, a real exporter of uh, nuclear energy uh, produce there. You have, of course, the, the Russian project, uh, but I think they have, due to the crisis, they have uh, postponed the Russian project of building a nuclear power plant in uh, Kaliningrad. Uh, which, which would be also an important player here in, in our region, yes. Nevertheless, uh, yes, it might radically change the uh, position and the potential geo-economical potential of Belarus, as well as it would also uh, really change the, uh, let's say, position of uh, Alexander Lukashenko in the future, because uh, it is another example of an uh, alliance of a mutually interesting and uh, mutually enhancing alliance between Russia and Belarus this time when it comes about uh, nuclear energy. So, so it's also building of new ties with uh, Russia geoeconomic uh, ties, which will be a long lasting um, for sure, because it's at least uh, 60 years, yes, if you look at the, at the programs and uh, agreements on cooperation that will uh, for a long term tie uh, russia as uh, belarus as a geo economical and geopolitical as well ally of uh, russia because it's a, it's a common project so um, perhaps that's why the americans the american corporations as well the, as the american administration reacts uh, uh, so um, hysterically i would even say uh, using its small allies like uh, Lithuania here to protest against uh, this expansion of uh, Rosatom and of uh, the Russian Belarusian uh, nuclear alliance. Anyway, I wanted I wanted to ask you something else. Um, um, if we look in the West, and I mean now um, especially Western Europe, um, I think we agree that if, let us say, for example, France would now uh, want to build a new nuclear power plant that this construction 
would be accompanied by harsh protests, by really harsh protests. I mean, we had the same uh, in Germany. Is this now the the result of really 40 or, no, we have already, two, I mean, it's already 2020, of 50 years, 50 years, very strong um, propaganda, which was permitted, which was uh, even fueled also within Western societies against nuclear energy, that it is, uh, even in countries, I'm not speaking now about Germany, which, I mean, that Germany officially said goodbye to nuclear energy is one result of this uh, 50 years his, history, hysteria, which was which which was really fueled and fueled and fueled. Um, what is interesting is if you speak with these activists, um, they have no idea about terms such as energy diversity or energy safety. And um, I mean, we speak when it comes to energy about much, much, much more than. Uh, uh, a factory is going, or we have uh, lights and electrical heaters. Um, we speak about the social topic also. We know, uh, and in Germany, we have already some kinds of calculations when it comes to this point. Uh, what will happen if a city like Berlin, Cologne, uh, or Hamburg is hit by a blackout? What can happen uh, any time right now? So we are in this point, not anymore just speaking um, about, well, then we need electricity again and we have to wait. We speak about uprising, social disorder, um, destruction, looting, and so on and so on. So we speak really about inner stability of Western countries when it comes to such kinds of blackouts. And we are not anymore speaking um, about blackouts taking one hour or I know from childhood that for a half an hour or so electricity was away. We speak about blackouts over very, very huge regions and areas for more than 24 hours, 48 hours, some days since uh, we know that you cannot just put electricity again into the cables. It has then to put in slowly and it has to be calculated. Um, so we speak about all these topics and seeing this now, having this right in front of our eyes, do you think that the energy question and the energy activity, such as from Alexander Lukashenko now in Belorussia, can even maybe turn uh, the tide between West and East in long term in Europe? Can it be that the energy safety of Eastern Europe, since they invest today in nuclear energy and the West is not anymore, the West is now trying, I mean, the, the, the problem of Germany, just as an example, is not that we just said goodbye to nuclear energy, they say now also goodbye to fossil energy. So the idea is to replace fossil and uh, the nuclear energy 100% by uh, renewable energies. What is, for example, wind energy, water energy, but we all know this is not going to happen from one day to the other, and um, there are Still, we are even waiting for a lot of inventions which have to be made. We have the, the problem of saving the energy. Uh, you cannot simply collect the energy during the day. And so we have that problem of to develop such kind of batteries, which you can take then uh, to compensate uh, when you don't have the energy from the sun, from the wind or from uh, the water uh, to put into uh, the energy network. So all these questions are still open while we have in Eastern Europe and especially now in Russia, the strong investments into nuclear energy. Do you think it is possible that uh, if we, and I'm sure we will still do our podcast in 30 years, when we do again a podcast about energy, that then we will speak right the other way around, that the West, especially Western Europe, will have an energy dependency on Eastern Europe, and Eastern Europe will develop quite well, um, in contrary to Western Europe. Do you think this is possible? Well, it is uh, theoretically possible, of course, but uh, uh, on one condition, I mean, uh, I don't think that uh, contrary to the contracts which are signed by uh, Rosatom with uh, several countries and uh, which are quite, uh, uh, let's say, interesting for both sides and uh, uh, based on uh, partnership, uh, you have the, the US-run projects, which uh, actually uh, seem to indicate most of them, like the Romanian one, 
that uh, it's the US who will keep, keep control on the exports and uh, revenues uh, out of this energy. Yes? So uh, it, uh, I, I, would, I would say that partly, partly uh, the West, uh, the Western part of Europe could uh, come into a kind of energy dependence on the United States in case United States succeed with its plans in uh, uh, Central and Eastern Europe. For the moment being, it's only Ukraine and Romania. I yeah. mean, what is, what is already, let's say, more or less precise. When it comes to Poland, there is a big question mark if they will manage to do that. Uh, nevertheless, that's why we have this war about uh, the future value of uh, uh, Central and Eastern European countries for the Western part of Europe as an en energy supplier. So you are right that the East will supply the West with the energy. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, who will take the revenue from that? Uh, the Americans, the Russians, or the Central European countries themselves? So this what, is what, an important question. What you, what you say is, is, is more or less that uh, in terms of energy geopolitics, that um, we speak now here about a kind of American Trojan horse. Uh, in yes, yes. I mean, it's uh, we we have uh, already uh, talked about that from the geopolitical point of view. You had this concept of the so-called uh, New Europe, yes, during the times of uh, Bush uh, administration uh, in, uh, in the two thousands. So uh, you had this situation when when it uh, went uh, when the US went to the intervention and uh, aggression against Iraq in two thousand three, yes. They, they were trying to build such a block of countries. They are doing the same when it comes to their uh, gas uh, exports and uh, trying to enter the European market and to block Russia from, from that market. They are doing the same when it comes to the nuclear energy issues which we have discussed today. So uh, this is the same old concept for the moment being. They have just, they have not much because they have just uh, five countries, uh, honestly speaking. They have uh, the Baltic states which are more or less uh, supporting this idea. They have Poland, uh, unfortunately, and they have Romania in the south. And, uh, the rest of the countries are not so eager to cooperate with the US. I, I mean, they are still trying to uh, be, let's say, more um, uh, willing to join more the, the, the so-called old Europe and to, to stay European countries than to be the part of the, this New Europe project, which is realized by the Americans. and. Uh, uh, the nuclear energy issue is just one of the fields on which the war is waged between the uh, this idea of uh, US having its Trojan horse in a continental Europe. Uh, for the moment being, we see that, uh, well, I would say that uh, the result is uh, still unknown because we have on the one hand uh, Belarus, which is uh, let's say, concrete fact, and we'll have now a, a development of its nuclear projects there. And uh, on the other hand, we have, uh, let's say, the Romanian project only, which is which is running and, or, or which is going to be launched, yes? It's, it's a very important point, because if we see this under this geopolitical prism of the Trojan horse, um, the American sabotage and critics against Nord Stream 2 becomes a totally different meaning than uh, how it is now usually discussed and debated in the daily politics. Um, then it is, of course, a very disturbing element for a long-term American plan, um, since, uh, let me say, if I can switch off the light in Germany anytime, um, I don't need one single soldier there anymore on the soil yeah? to I mean to say it now in the most extreme so um, then this could this could be the real reason why the US is so fiercely against any kind really against any kind of energy import diversity when it comes to Germany as we said uh, the very very last highly industrialized industrialized uh, country in Europe is somehow the engine uh, of, of obviously the big export nation and so on. So if the Americans have really all the energy import in Germany in their hands, and they can, of course, <laughs> I mean, the Americans are also not stupid. They know that uh, for a country like Germany, 
it will not take years until they replace uh, the today's uh, energy demand by renewable energies that it might take decades or even even more that we get close to this and we shouldn't forget that the energy demand is not a static thing it is rising at the same time so we speak if we speak about a country in 10 years we speak also about that the energy demand in 10 years will be much much higher than the energy demand of today so if we see this under this geopolitical prism that all gets a totally different meaning and we speak again about terms as geopolitical domination control about blackmailing about forcing a country to do what this country supposedly is not willing to do but by well by a bargain by a blackmail product and what could be better than the energy of course that's why i guess that we'll speak um, um, not uh, not once but uh, several times more about that topic i mean uh, when it comes to not only belarus but uh, all other projects uh, perhaps we'll also um, uh, invite or discuss it with some experts from the countries which are let's say of the uh, particular interest when it comes to the nuclear geopolitics of central and eastern europe i think i think we should do this because this might be maybe in 10 years the dominating topic it might be for us as dominating as today for a lot of african countries and middle eastern countries is the question of water the very crucial question of water and that one country can stop the fresh water supply to another country with uh, with with some means and i think that is exactly what what is now happening in europe but uh, my very last question since you know all these things much better than i do as i find out now again <laughs> but really why is why don't we find this question debated right now in media in politics on a very high level i have the impression that we speak about many many other things but about this huge um, task or or challenge for the future um, do, do you share the impression as i do that maybe the west and i say again western europe and germany maybe now still don't understand uh, where the ship is going uh, right now, or uh, do you think it is already debated, but just under the surface of the recent daily topics? I, I'm I'm pretty sure that it is debate debated uh, everywhere, yes. But uh, uh, the question is that I mean, uh, we are uh, I mean Poland and Germany and uh, Romania and some other countries which which we were discussing about are members of European Union, yes. Uh, according to um, the rules and standards of European Union, when it comes to uh, all huge uh, st state-run or state-guaranteed in investments, uh, there should be tenders, yes, about, uh, well, for instance, cho choosing the uh, nuclear reactor suppliers or tech nuclear technology suppliers from uh, several existing uh, offers from different companies. The problem is that in Romania, Poland and uh, some other countries, uh, they are even not talking about any kind of tenders. Yes, they are just uh, signing the agreements, the political agreements, which are guaranteeing the US the monopoly. Yes, so so this is quite interesting. I mean, and and then the German politicians or German experts or French experts or politicians are not, uh, let's say, interfering because of, of the fear of being accused of being anti-US, yes? Uh, because they would have to say that, that, uh, you know, what, what what are you doing? I mean, uh, it's not only in the interest of Rosatom or the Chinese, or let's say that the uh, um, alien geopolitical players uh, from outside European Union to, to have uh, transparent tenders when it comes to nuclear energy. It's also in the interest of uh, uh, French companies. I, I mean, the French are also quite uh, uh, strong when it comes to nuclear energy technologies, for instance. Yes, so it is a country of European Union, but we in Poland or in Romania, we are not discussing about the choosing on, of one of the offers, including the uh, offers which are available on the European market, but we are just uh, signing political agreements with the US. Uh, and that's why I think, I mean, this is my opinion, that that's why perhaps some of, 
of the experts or of the elites of the media in, uh, in uh, Western Europe uh, just uh, uh, fear to be accused of anti-Americanism. So we that's why they, they, are not, they, they are not raising that topic. It's not politically correct now. Yes? We are not afraid to be accused of that. We are, you know, we are, that's why we are talking about it. You know why? Because it's true. We are. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, are, we are getting slowly to the end, but yes. I tell you, since 15 minutes, there is a choke burning on my soul. Uh, and I want to ask you, if you permit me to do a revanchist choke at the end of our podcast. Uh, of course, I'm very tolerant for those jokes, as you know. Since, <laughs> yeah, that is, maybe it's also, I mean, it's a little bit cheap also, but I mean, I am also a little bit cheap when it comes to these things. So. You, you, you said that Russia is uh, planning to build a nuclear power plant close to Kaliningrad, yeah? So then we built in Germany again power plants, you see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think the Russians who are listening to us won't be <laughs> won't be happy. Yes, that. yes, but I, I said in the beginning it was a joke and, uh, oh, you know. Of course, of course. <laughs> repeat it, repeat it that it was a joke, of course. It was it it was a joke. Uh, don't put me in gulag. No, it, you know that. But it was simply one of these jokes who are somehow much better when you just imagine telling them than when you tell them. And really, it was it, it, it's a little. It's a little bit lame. I have to. I have to admit. But now, but now it's out, and I can sleep peacefully without thinking I should have told Mateo yes, this joke. Yes. Yes. So, thank you so much for your time and. Yeah. I forward for our next podcast which uh, will hopefully come very soon because uh, maybe our listener listeners are now it's also the watchers we shouldn't forget would will have seen that we are both very 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 busy people so sometimes it takes a couple of days until we publish a new podcast but uh, i hope that our next one won't take so long it will be very soon i'm sure Okay, thank you so much. Goodbye and uh, enjoy the rest of the week. Thanks a lot. See you. This program was presented to you by Manuel Oxenreiter and Mateusz Piskorski, the hottest dissident who won't violate any time the global rules against racism, extremism, or any other bad isms. <laughs>